Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I've been doing YouTube videos now for a few years. Never once have I done a video on these, and never once have I told you to put one of these in your trauma kit. So, today's the day. We're going to do a video. We're going to talk about it. It seems like every video that I do that talks about bleeding control, hemostatic agents, galls, and like that, there's comments about using tampons to plug holes, plug GSWs, gunshot wounds with this product here. They said, I'm going to put these, I've got it in my trauma kit, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to take this apart and show you just how little gauze is actually in here. And we're going to talk about that, show you some other products that are cheaper and that are just as effective. So now if we talk about what is the best, what is the best product that you can buy to save your life, to save your friend's life, save your buddy's life, whatever, then let's talk about hemostatic agents, okay? This is the gold standard. This is what people are using for wound packing. This is Combat Gall Celox. Now, I get it, guys. These things are expensive. You're talking about $45, $55 in that area for brand spanking new Combat Galls. So we talked about what the very best was. That's our hemostatic agent here. Let's go down the line just a little bit here. So this is just a roll of clean, curl X, whatever you want to call it. This is basically just cheesecloth here and then compressed gauze. This is a lot cheaper to buy a box full of clean or compressed gauze. Right, so when we talk about bandaging wounds, we can pretty much all agree on 4x4s and 5x9s. They're the two most prevalent types of gauze we use for that. This is what you're gonna see on every ambulance, most first aid kits, things like that. So the 4x4 here is for minor injuries, okay, minor wounds. This is gonna be oozing blood, abrasions, things like that. It really doesn't absorb that much blood. Then you get to the 5x9s. This is more of a moderate to heavy bleeding. So this will absorb a lot more blood. All right, so I've opened one up and I just want to show you how much galls is actually in here. So push this out, unroll it. That's about it, folks. There is how much galls is in here that you say that we're going to control major bleeding with. Now let's compare these to the galls that's actually in the tampon here. So if we fold the 4x4 up, I'll get it kind of the same size-ish, you can see here that it's pretty close. Now obviously the tampon's more dense, but you're fairly close here. And this is the one that we said that we would use for minor bleeding. So really how much more absorbent is this? So. If we talk about the 5x9 here, this is the one we talked about that we would use for the moderate to heavy bleeding. There we go. You can see the 5x9 is going to absorb a lot more blood than the tampon. Alright, so let's lay this out on the table. Here's our tampon. Here's a roll of clean. Now, I, the one I opened up was sterile, but the tampon's not sterile, so that doesn't matter. You can buy the non-sterile gauze, okay, because this is not sterile. It has no need to be sterile. So. A tampon is not sterile, doesn't matter. So this cling that opened up was sterile, makes it a little bit more expensive, but you can buy the non-sterile for really cheap. So this is just cheesecloth here. And you can see how much more we have than the tampon. So this is cheap, guys. So for those of you tell me about price, can't do it. So you can see a lot more here. So let's talk about the compressed galls. Now compressed galls, a little bit more expensive than the cling, but let's open it up. And now, without even unrolling this to make it not so dense, you can see a huge difference here, guys. This is it. So one of the things that always comes up is in a crap hits the fan situation where there's no medical help coming, no 911, no hospitals, things like that. Guys say they're going to use these. They're going to have these in their bug out bag and trauma kits. Although they should be in your bug out bag, but not for trauma. That's a whole nother video. But people are going to say they're going to use these in a crap hits the fan situation. And I don't, I don't see it. I don't get it. Where this is basically cotton material. This is a, a non-sterile woven mater cloth material to absorb blood, other materials. And you're, these are going to be more available than a t-shirt or a towel or whatever else I don't see it I don't, I don't get it I don't get that mindset of it you know we talk about you know infection all that stuff I, I get it okay but at that time we're just worried about controlling major bleeding you're, you're talking about you're gonna use this for a gunshot wound so that's pretty pretty life-threatening that's pretty scary 
So at that point in time, we're just worried about stopping the bleeding. We'll worry about infection later. So I don't see that portion of it. Another thing guys will talk about is the price point. They just they can't afford anything better, so this is what they're going to use. They're going to raid their wife's cabinet and stick tampons in their trauma kits. And I, I tend to argue that too. I think your priorities are probably in the wrong place. You know, I don't expect every single person to go out and buy the hemostatic agents. I get it. These guys are expensive. I understand. But this roll of clean here is cheap. This compressed gauze is cheap, so I don't get the price point either. I actually pulled up Amazon right here because this is the one you guys always argue with me about my prices on. You tell me you can get it on Amazon cheaper, so Amazon's not making medical videos for you. But stretch gauze, 12 rolls, 4 feet by 4 inches, and um, 4 yards, sorry, not feet. Uh, 6 bucks. That's cheap. So that's 12 of them. So these things, small box, like five bucks, okay? So for about the same price as you, your wife's buying a box of these, you can buy 12 rolls of clean. Put a couple of these in your trauma kit, it will pack just fine. Like we use this in class, like it works. This is not as good as this, but this works. So you're talking six bucks for 12 rolls of these off Amazon. So the five by nine which talked about here showed you this one remember showed you these so this is for the moderate to heavy bleeding controls a lot more blood absorbs a lot more blood than this so a uh, box of 36 for eleven dollars looks like there's a box of 25 there for thirteen dollars so there you go so this will go a long way than this and then probably the closest thing that I could find of the same amount of galls as the tampon is in here is uh, a 200 pack for eight bucks off Amazon if you got Amazon Prime you got free shipping so for the same stuff material here eight bucks you get 200 packs of it so price it's not there guys So wrapping up this video, I just I don't see a need for a tampon and a trauma kit. I just don't see it. There's nothing there to support it. There's not enough galls in there to support it. The price point's not there to support it. Nothing's there to support it, guys. I don't I don't get it. Yes, would it work? Maybe, probably. Okay, I get it. Did somebody some special forces do carry it in the army, military? Things like that, yes, they do. I know they do, okay? I get it. But is it the best thing? No, it's not. There's a lot better things out there for you to control bleeding with than a tampon. And yes, there is a time for improvised medicine, okay? I understand. I've talked about videos about making tourniquets, things like that. In a bad situation, yes, I'm going to make a tourniquet because I'm not going to have enough commercial tourniquets out there. You know, I may have to use a belt. I may have to use a triangle bandage like I did with how to make a tourniquet video. Improvised medicine has its place, but improvised medicine will also get a lot of people killed, and that's what the people don't realize. They're going to use duct tape, or they're going to use all this stuff, and I get it. There's a time and a place for that, but improvised medicine will kill patients. So when you get done watching this video, go out to your trauma kit, take this out of your trauma kit, put it in your bug out bag for your wife in case she needs it if you have to bug out, but take it out of your trauma kit, Put some compressed galls in there. Put a roll of cling in there. But take this stupid thing out. So I hope this video helped. You never know when you'll be the first responder bringing the right gear and the right training. So with that being said, if you have not looked and thought about signing up for one of my trauma classes, you really need to do that. I've got two classes already scheduled for 2017. I'm going to schedule some more out. Just need to get those two scheduled first. Uh, but there's people coming from Canada. Uh, there's a gentleman talking about coming to the UK. So don't let travel be discouraging because people are, are coming into this class. So people are already signing up for the classes. Um, so take a look at that. Try to fit in your schedule. So thank you guys for all the support. Don't worry, bro. If somebody shoots themselves, I got tampons. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So, how effective are using tampons 
for gunshot or well any sort of wound, any major major bleeding that you'd have to, you know, pack to wound. You know, I was I was just on a I was on a radio show the other day and they asked me the same exact question. <laughs> And I'll say the same thing I said then. There's two places that tampons can go. One of them's the nose and one of them's not the nose. Uh, and uh, we, we, we've used tampons in the emergency department for nosebleeds before. But that's before we had better stuff out there. Back in Vietnam, the guys were saying, hey, plug this hole with this tampon. They didn't, they didn't know any better. They didn't have anything better out there. You know, times have changed, man. Uh, and if you're still carrying tampons in your med kit, Unless you have, uh, unless you have a you know female shooter who might hit her, her her you know <laughs> menstrual cycle right in the middle of a of a class and need a tampon, <laughs> you don't you don't need them in your in your med kit. No, and I'm not saying it to be flip. It's just I mean that's the only time you need a tampon, honestly, uh, because you look at look at look at look at a basic breakdown of a tampon. You got two four inch strips of one and a half one to one and a half inch wide gauze co or compressed cotton on a string all right one of my buddies in, in Iraq one of their guys caught a PKM round at a, a keyhole into his into his left hip and literally blew out his left butt cheek they put three rolls of combat gauze into that wound before it was fully packed that's 36 feet of gauze so Jesus. do the math man do the math you're talking a multi-dimensional uh, multi uh, channeled wound possibly and, and you know that's going to be very the cavitation the stretch cavity is going to be the crush cavity is going to be massive on that and a tampon man that's like tossing the fat kid a pez ain't going to be they ain't going to be happy you know? <laughs> it, it just it ain't it ain't working you know well there's the opening for the podcast right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's an effect kid of Pez. You know, and, you know, spitting on a forest fire, whatever whatever analogy you want to use. It, it's just I don't recommend them. I don't advocate them because they're not effective. I mean, back in the people say, oh, that's what my corpsman swore by. Well, yeah, your corpsman went, was, you know, a baby corpsman in Vietnam. And that's, you know, we've got a lot better stuff out there now. Yeah, it's more expensive, but... Again, what's your life worth? I mean, that's just that's what it boils down to. What's your freaking life worth? It, it's such a good question too, because every <laughs> video that you'll ever see anywhere, some dude says, "I oh, just carry tampons; it'll be fine." Yep. It's like, yeah. no, no, man, no, <laughs> no, no bro. It, it won't be fine, and and that's just it, man. And that's that's we we try to educate people, and I and I'm never I'm never gonna. I'm never going to tell somebody, "Hey, you're a moron for carrying them," but I, because my job is to educate, not to not to degrade somebody, you know, degrade someone and say, "Hey, you're an idiot for doing that." Because I'm going to say, "Hey, you know what? Back in the day, that was a good choice. Now we've got so much more better equipment out there that's better suited and is actually designed to do the job. You got to spend some money, but you know, what's your life worth? More than a tampon. Absolutely. Yeah. 